WCW World Tour on Nintendo 64 was a game that made PlayStation 1 owning wrestling fans a little envious. The simplicity of the controls, the fun gameplay, the great roster, WCW World Tour was just a fantastic wrestling video game that really showed fans what was possible with 3D graphics. The WWF were yet to release a 3D wrestling game, WWF WrestleMania the arcade game and WWF In Your House had used digitized sprites to bring wrestlers to life and while it did work for that time period, this kind of presentation was feeling a little dated by the time 1998 came around. Iguana West, a development team formerly known as Sculptured Software, were given the task of creating the first ever WWF 3D game, and the game they created was WWF Warzone. Being the first WWF game to move away from sprite based graphics and digitized graphics, Warzone remains fondly remembered by those who played it, and today we're going to take a closer look at the game. Sculptured Software developed some classic WWF games such as Super WrestleMania, WWF Raw Rumble and WWF Raw. Not only that, they developed the original Star Wars trilogy on Super Nintendo, they ported Mortal Kombat 1 and 2 to the Super Nintendo, while bringing Mortal Kombat 3 to both the Super Nintendo and Mega Drive, and they were also responsible for the home ports of WrestleMania the arcade game. The company was eventually bought out by publisher Acclaim Entertainment in 1995, and by December of 1997 the team was renamed to Iguana West. Two years later they would get renamed again to Acclaim Studios Salt Lake City, but when Warzone was in development, the team was known as Iguana West. A lead programmer, Justin Towns, gave an interview about the development of Warzone and what the team was aiming for with the game, and much of the information you'll hear in this video is from that interview. Warzone was named WWF 98 early in development. Using feedback gained from wrestling fans, Justin and the team at Iguana West decided to make their next WWF game simulation based. The team wanted to try and capture the flow and feeling of a real wrestling match and to accomplish this, they moved away from fast arcade like gameplay while trying to make Warzone more grounded in realism. Things would of course need speeded up a little to make it fun, but the general idea behind Warzone was to let fans create authentic wrestling matches. WCW World Tour was used as a comparison piece for Warzone, Iguana West looked at the WCW N64 game and they thought of ways to make Warzone stand out when put head to head with the competition. Justin said, We sat down and thought, what do you have to do to be better than them? We took a broad look and so we looked at the other games graphics and we asked ourselves, what can we do to improve upon them? So our wrestlers look as real as possible and that's not something that you see a whole lot of in the market right now. And let's use motion capture as opposed to keyframing so that we could get the moves to look a little more real. Basically we said to ourselves, let's take as many technical aspects as we can and pump those up. Motion capture was handled by four unknown lower card guys with Justin flat out calling them jobbers who were low on the WWF totem pole. We know for a fact that the Hardy Boys done the motion capture for WWF Attitude, Warzone's sequel, and it's been said that they also provided motion capture for Warzone, but I've been unable to confirm this 100%. What's interesting also is the fact that many more moves were captured for Warzone that had to be left out due to data limitations. Speaking of data limitations, the Nintendo 64 version that would begin development after the PS1 version due to Iguana West not having development kits, that version didn't feature some of the things that really made the PS1 version of Warzone stand out such as full motion video, CD quality theme music and robust commentary, but we'll look at the N64 version a bit later on. So the goal with Warzone was to make it look more realistic than what was already on the market. The game used motion capture to try and make things as authentic as possible, wrestlers were going to look more lifelike and the gameplay itself would try and replicate what fans saw on TV when tuning into Raw's War on a Monday night. Warzone on PlayStation was released in the United States in July of 1998 and following this was the European release one month later along with the N64 version. Two months after that, WCW Revenge was released on N64, giving Warzone some real competition on Nintendo's console. 
But enough of the history, let's look at the roster, the game modes, the presentation. Let's have a few games of Warzone and I'll also talk about my memories of the game. When you first load WWF Warzone, you'll be presented with an original full motion video that's very well put together. Using the Thorn in Your Eye Raw is War theme, the intro video shows us highlights of all the wrestlers included in the game while keeping a distinct WWF Raw is War theme going on. It's leagues better than the In Your House intro. The menu system itself is set in a warehouse elevator where different options bring you to a different floor, and we have a few options that set Warzone apart from the competition. Working our way from the bottom up, we have Superstar Biographies, and this was pretty cool at the time. Not only can you learn a little about your favourite superstars, you can also look at their full character model while listening to their theme song. High scores is pretty self explanatory, this is a fresh game save here so I have nothing recorded so far. Options will let you change difficulty, change the camera angle and turn the commentary off. You can also set auto save here which you should definitely do. Warzone was also the very first wrestling game to include a true create a wrestler mode. Editing wrestlers names and attires was possible in previous games. And the Fire Pro Wrestling releases on the Super Famicom let players build wrestlers using combinations of graphics used for existing superstars, but Warzone let you build your own wrestler from scratch. I'm sure a lot of you watching wasted a lot of time in creator wrestler mode. Selections are quite limited in comparison to later games, but this was quite a big deal back in the day. Trying to create wrestlers though who weren't in the game could be quite tough. There wasn't a big selection to choose from here and you'd have to use your imagination a little. A training mode is also featured where you can get the grips with the controls and how to pull off moves but we'll talk about that in a moment. This mode is handy though if you wanted to learn how to play the game and not do the same moves over and over again. Ok so play modes include challenge, versus, tag team, cage and weapons. Challenge is your single player career mode where you start from the bottom and work your way up the WWF ladder but we'll talk about that soon. The other modes are simply different choices of exhibition matches, so the main chunk of the game is found inside the challenge mode, and challenge mode is also where you'll unlock new attires for your wrestlers along with some game modifiers and a few new characters, although there's no new WWF superstars to unlock except if you want to count Dude Love and Cactus Jack. The other characters you unlock are people like the trainer or Sue the ring girl. The roster we have here is pretty decent for the time too. We have Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Davy Boy Smith, Farouk, Goldust, Triple H, Mankind, The Rock, Ahmed Johnson, Bret Hart, Owen Hart, The Undertaker, Ken Shamrock, Kane, Thrasher and Mosh. Bret Hart's inclusion is pretty interesting seeing as he left the WWF back in November of 1997, Warzone was released in July of 1998. Removing a character I assume would have been a difficult task back then with everything needing to be reworked from getting a replacement wrestler included to making changes to the career mode. But it's interesting that many other wrestlers have updated models that reflect the time period after Bret's departure. You're only going to see entrances in challenge mode by the way and they are absolutely nothing special at all, but you have to remember when this came out, WCW World Tour didn't have entrances at all. So playing the game itself, some people like it, others don't. Where WCW World Tour had a very simplistic button layout that anyone could learn in a few minutes, Warzone makes you work a little harder to perform moves. Your whole moveset is based on button combinations, so for example, if you want to pull off a DDT with Triple H, you're going to press forward, down, square. Single button taps will kick, punch, perform a lockup or block, while your shoulder buttons will make you dodge left, dodge right, climb and run. From a lockup, your moveset will change, so there is actually a decent amount of variety when it comes to offense. But be prepared, if you're anything like me, you'll be looking at these screens a lot until you begin memorizing different moves. This is one of the things I remember about Warzone, there were a few guys who I could remember a ton of moves for, but for everyone else, it was like this. I'd have to pause the game and look at the moveset all the time to try and learn what combinations done what move. 
You can get by by using standard combinations like forward forward triangle or up up square, but if you want to pull off a specific move at a specific time, be prepared to pause the game a lot or have a sheet of paper beside you. Because of this, Warzone does get better the more you familiarise yourself with a specific character, it's a game that will reward you for sticking with it. We have an interesting heads up display too that takes a bit of getting used to. Your opponent's green health bar will go down multiple times as you beat your opponent up and every time you deplete it, it gets replenished again, it will also change colour. Getting your opponent into red will allow you to perform your finishing move and you have a better chance of winning the match when your opponent is in the red state. Below that we have another smaller bar that lets you know how much damage your move has done. This bar can get multiplied if you work the crowd. Changing your moves up while staying on offense consistently will make the crowd chant your name. This makes your name flash in the heads up display and when this happens you'll do more damage to your opponent while also benefiting from quick recoveries. The better your superstar's charisma score is, the more the crowd will chant your name. It sounds a bit complicated but it's very straightforward. Players can also find themselves in a stunned state where they have to empty out a blue bar before continuing and submissions are represented by a red bar filling up under your name. Under the hood there's actually a pretty sophisticated move system that determines which wrestler successfully pulls off a move and it's based on a move complexity score. Moves are ranked from 1 to 9 where a low ranking move would be a simple button tap with a direction and a high ranking move would be like Hunter's DDT from earlier on. If your opponent goes for a low ranking move while you go for a high ranking move, your opponent will always win. But if your name is one of three shades of blue, you have a higher chance of pulling off a high ranking move. This means if you're in control of the match, the crowd's chanting your name and you're having a good offensive streak, you'll have a better chance at pulling off risky moves. It's a good system and when you've got two players who know the ins and outs of the game and what moves are higher risk, you can get some great fun matches. Of course you can just wing it and look good at the game too and when playing against the CPU you're gonna win either way because the game is very easy, but a smart player who understands the risk system will always beat someone who doesn't when playing a two player game. Each wrestler has their own finishing move of course and they all look fairly decent. Pulling off a finisher can also be a little tricky but once you know the combination you're good to go. You can pull off a finisher as much times as you please once the opponent's in the red but you also risk the crowd booing you for doing repetitive moves and your friend might end up getting some help via the momentum system. One on one matches are exactly what they sound like. Tag team matches see a reduction in player polygons just like other multi man matches but it still looks pretty good and you've also got cage and weapon matches. Weapon matches are just hardcore matches while the steel cage matches are won by exiting the cage before your opponent. You'll also notice that there's no ring ropes here. Now that we know what the game is all about, let's go back to the challenge mode. Pick a wrestler and get ready to work your way through the entire roster in order to win the WWF Championship and pick up some unlockables along the way. This is the main career mode screen where you can see your character's progress. I picked Ken Shamrock here so I'm right at the bottom of the table and I need to work my way up to WWF Champion Shawn Michaels. So the start of my career will be a match against Bret Hart, so I'm fucked. The rankings here are totally random by the way, you can see Mosh is right up there with The Undertaker and he's doing better than Stone Cold Steve Austin. Not only do you have to beat every single competitor in a one on one match, but every now and then you'll get challenged by someone who you already beat. Usually that challenger will want a cage match or a weapons match. This is where Warzone shines as the challenges are actually full motion videos starring the superstars who want to beat your ass. And some of these videos are fun to look back at today. Have a watch. Yeah, forget about your sharpshooters and your Pearl River punches and all that other trash. Once you get hit with the Stone Cold Stunner, son, it's one, two, three lights out. I just whipped your ass. No one can carry the Federation on his back like I have. Not even you, you dirty piece of trash. The problem with this world is that people like you are turned into heroes by this sick society. Being the man that I am, I accept your challenge and I'll be able to prove that you are worthless. The British Bulldog looks absolutely hammered in his videos though, must have been a long day in the office for Davy Boy Smith. The other piece of the trash of the World Wrestling Federation could never be the championship material that I am. 
If you think you've got what it takes to put the choke chain on the British Bulldog, then think again. When I get through with you, there better be enough of you to strip off the floor when you feel the wrath of the Bulldog. So you go through every opponent, you win the challenge matches, you then have to defend the WWF Championship, and that will be the end of challenge mode. Not gonna lie, it's an absolute slog to get through and it feels never ending. You also have to do this quite a few times to unlock the additional attires and whatnot, and the prospect of completing this game 100% in this day and age feels almost laughable. But we all did it back in 1998 and it was a great time too. Those little videos before the challenges are great though, and it is a reason to keep playing, but we have YouTube if we really want to check those out now, so it all feels kinda pointless going back. The unlockables simply aren't worth it either, if there were 4 or 5 brand new WWF superstars to unlock then yeah, that would be great, but there isn't. With the roster you have here, a lot of moves to memorise and a few different game modes, Back in the day, Warzone was pretty satisfactory, and there was a lot to like about the game, but let's talk about the not so great aspects of the game. First of all, the vast majority of wrestling gamers like the simplicity of WCW World Tour way more than Warzone, and Warzone felt a little overwhelming for those not prepared to learn the movesets. Because World Tour was so easy to grasp, it also became a lot more fun to play. Warzone, in comparison to World Tour and indeed the other Aki games, felt a little clunky in terms of how it played and how the characters moved around. There's also an argument to be made that World Tour also looked better than Warzone, but this is really subjective too. The face textures were better in Warzone, but the actual look of the game and the way the character models came to life just didn't look right in Warzone either. Player positioning played a large role in Warzone too, where you had to be in the right place at the right time to perform moves. So you had to get in position then quickly tap your button combination to do what you wanted. The Aki games eliminated all that by making placement extremely easy and making specific moves easy to remember. I'm actually doing Warzone a favour by comparing it to World Tour also, but it was World Tour that Iguana West used when coming up with Warzone. WCW Revenge came out two months later, and to me it blew Warzone out of the water in terms of gameplay, graphics and overall presentation. Revenge couldn't be beaten. I had a friend who owned a Nintendo 64 and we would play the WCW games all the time, and by the time I got home and put on my PlayStation, I just didn't feel like playing Warzone anymore. Don't get me wrong, I loved it when it came out and I remember playing it to death in order to unlock the costumes and all that stuff, but I wished I had an N64 once Revenge came out. It is kinda unfair too to instantly compare a game to another without highlighting its merits. Warzone was a decent wrestling game that completely changed what WWF games were all about. As a debut into the world of polygons, WWF Warzone certainly wasn't bad, but like many games of the era, it hasn't aged well either. Speaking of the N64, let's look at Warzone on the Nintendo console. You do lose a lot here, but you also gain a few things that some fans might enjoy over the PlayStation version. So the big things that are missing are the challenge mode videos, the CD quality theme music, and also you lose quite a bit of commentary, but commentary was never a big highlight of Warzone on PS1 anyway. For theme music, you get chiptune renditions like this. During the actual game though, to me Warzone on N64 looks a lot better. While the character shading is very basic, it still looks better than the PlayStation version. Everything looks a lot smoother here, and while I am playing both the PS1 and N64 versions upscaled, even playing the game with no enhancements show that Warzone on N64 is graphically superior. The big thing though that Warzone on N64 has that the PlayStation version doesn't is a Royal Rumble mode. No load times on Nintendo's console makes this possible, and it's a fun game mode to play. You also get a gauntlet mode where you wrestle one superstar after another. Again, a lack of load times makes this possible on the Nintendo console. It depends what you value more here. Do you want the authentic theme music and the full motion video, or do you want the better looking game and the additional game modes? Gameplay is the exact same though. 
Iguana West consisted of a team of around 20 people. The team was split in half with one team working on the PS1 version and the other working on the N64 version when the development kits arrived, and both teams shared code to ensure there was no big discrepancies when it came to gameplay. So it's really up to you what you want in a game. Back then, even if I had an N64, I still would have went with the PS1 version because I was a sucker for entrance music, but nowadays, with how easily accessible the FMV sequences are, and we have all the entrance themes we could ever want online, the N64 version is probably the better choice if you want to play the game today. One other version does exist though and that's the Game Boy version that was actually released before the console versions. This one was developed by Crawfish and honestly I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Whereas the WCW Mayhem Game Boy release was quite interesting to look at a few weeks back, Warzone is just a bad game that has nothing going for it. You do get the character biographies again and I like how Kane doesn't have a favourite quote, but get into the game itself and… yeah, it's the Game Boy so you can't be too harsh but this just isn't good. If you want a good WWF Game Boy game, pick up WWF Superstars. All in all, Warzone on PlayStation 1 does bring back good memories for me and I had fun capturing the footage for this video and getting the grips with the controls again. I'm going to play a bit more once I get done with this upload. Those Aki wrestling games aren't put on a pedestal for nothing though and while Warzone was good, the WCW games on N64 to me were way more fun to play. That being said, when you look at Warzone on its own and you refrain from comparing it to what else was available, it was still a good game that does capture that late 1997 WWF roster and the overall change of theme that the World Wrestling Federation was going through, and Warzone sold enough copies to warrant a sequel that we'll look at another time. For those who owned Warzone all those years ago, you will get a big dose of nostalgia when playing this one again, and you're probably going to have a good time too. For everyone else though who never played it before, I can see those guys switching off after a few minutes. Warzone is a product of its time, it doesn't look like much today, but it was definitely a step in the right direction when it comes to WWF games on home consoles. Thanks for watching this one guys, and take care. If you feeling like a pimp, go on, brush your shoulders off. Ladies is pimps too, go on, brush your shoulders off. Sickin' it's crazy, baby, don't forget that boy told you, kid. That dirt up your shoulders. I probably owe it to y'all, probably be locked by the force. Trying to hustle some things, that go with the brush. Feeling no remorse, feeling like my hand was false. Middle finger to the Lord, gripping my balls. Said the ladies, they love me, from the beaches, they screaming. All the ballers is bouncing, they like the way I be leaning. The rappers be hating, hope the trap that I'm making, but all the hustles they love it just to see one of us make it. Came from the bottom, the bottom to the top of the pops. London, Whoa. Japan, Whoa. and I'm straight up the block. Like a running back, get it, man? I'm straight up the block. I can run it back, cause I'm straight with the rock. Come on, you feeling like a pimp?